Today's episode is brought to you by Fretboard Biology, the comprehensive online guitar course put together by Joe Elliott. Now, Joe is not only a fantastic guitar player, he draws on his years of experience as the ex-head of guitar at the Guitar Institute of Technology and also at the McNally Smith Music College. Here's a few words from Joe about the course. If you're tired of wading through hundreds of random guitar videos and just want to become a better player, Fretboard Biology is your answer. Fretboard Biology is a self-paced, college-level program that will give you the right instruction, in the right amounts, and in the right order. You'll learn the same information I taught to thousands of other guitar players over 30 years of teaching in top music colleges. If you want to make real progress with your guitar playing, then sign up for a free 7-day trial at fretboardbiology.com. Hi there, you are listening to the Guitar Speak podcast. My name is Matt Wakeling and this is the show I produce in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today I speak to Alex Rottier and Gabor Jessica. They are the co-hosts of the Super Fun Awesome Happy Time Pedal Show. Yes, they are the Super Fun Awesome Happy Time Pedal Show. So fun to say once you know the right order of the words I've been practicing. Hey, these guys run a YouTube channel. It was one of the first gear channels really to emerge from Australia. And these days I have close to 30,000 people regularly tuning in and checking out the content. These guys deal with some really big companies like Yamaha, Line 6 and Boss, but also some very boutique one-man and one-woman operations. So it's a really unique show and it is a lot of fun. Gabor, you might know that name. He's one of the co-hosts on the iconic series we have here on the Guitar Speak podcast alongside Rob Rhodes. So it's cool to get Gabor in for to talk about his regular show and uh, cool to hang with Alex as well. It's a fascinating conversation. There's some very cool behind-the-scenes insights on running a YouTube channel. So let's jump straight in. Alex and Gabor, welcome to the Guitar Speak podcast. Hey, Matt. Thank you. Uh, uh, Great. Uh, thank you very much. Alex, Great was it? Is that, was that your name, Alex? This is it's Alex. Yes. <laughs> wow, Alex, <laughs> nice to meet you. I've, I've heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> On the internet. Yeah. So you guys are from the super fun, awesome, happy time pedal show. Did I get that correct? Yes. That's oh, right. Man. Yes. I've been yes. practicing. I've been working on it. It's a long name. <laughs> you get a virtual super cookie fun. for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. That's cool. <laughs> hey, you guys, um, you guys must be one of the longest running Australian YouTube channels doing gear. I mean, there's Brett Kingman, who is I mean, everyone's, to- everyone's papa uh, yeah, yeah. for gear demos. But yeah. yeah. Um, I can't. There's no one I know of who's been at it longer than you guys. Nope. We're we we we've been around for a long time. We're idiots. That's what we are. So um, <laughs> yeah. No, was it? I, I think it's eight eight years, seven years, eight years. Wow. Really? Yeah. Well, we've been in this house for almost seven years, maybe. And we started Six or seven years. We started before that. Before that, yeah. You were in the flat we lived in. So yeah, in Perugia. Yeah. In a spare room. Yeah. So I think really? I think the it was the eighth annual. Pedal of the Year awards we did, just okay. At, so yeah, so we've been going, and I think we started it was about October or so we started, uh, or maybe September October. Was it? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was sort of second half of the year we started, and and so about yeah, at least eight years. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking mm-hmm. like, I don't know like 2014, 2016, something like that. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, <why not>? Something <laughs> anyway. Let's go with that. That's, Let's uh, go yeah. with that. So, Who's but, counting? Hey, that's cool. What I like, there's lots of things I love about the show. Um, you guys obviously have lots of real world experience. There's lots of people doing pedal demos in their bedroom who, there's some amazing stuff out there, of course, but there's, there's also um, players who maybe are bedroom players, but you guys are engaged in the industry. So I know you guys are gigging. Um, from what I gather from the show, um, I know, Alex, you do live production. And mm. you're running a studio. Is there any other strings to your bows that I've I've missed out in your uh, in your musical background? Um, I don't know. How about you? Do you have strings? Uh, well, I, I usually pull the strings, but <laughs> <laughs> um, pull balls. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, no, no. I, I mean, uh, yeah, Alex. Uh, Alex lately, especially, does more the production side of things. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a gigging. We were just talking before we started this. Um, 
I just, it's already, I mean, what, what, it's the first week of January and I've already done maybe six gigs <laughs> this year. Yeah, so right. yeah, it's, yeah. it's, 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 uh, I gig a lot. I do sort of three, four, stupidly sometimes five gigs a week, um, still. So that's my sort of main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And, and yeah, Alex, what's, what's a, a week in the life look like for you? Well, these days, um, I've kind of gone more into the live sound world. Um, doing production. I have a small production company locally here. Mm -hmm. So that varies a lot of the jobs we do. But um, as far as actually guitar stuff goes, I used to play a lot as a bass player. Okay, yep. I used to gig regularly as a bass player around town. and I think when I met you, I I thought originally you were a bass player (laughs) because you pretty much played bass all the time, yeah. Uh Yeah, there's just not enough bass players in the world. That's the fact of it, really. It's very true. Especially like working sort of bands and you know function bands or corporate bands Definitely. cover stuff or even original things and you had a six string bass too when i first met you i did have a six yeah, string bass which that just made everything much cooler and broke my back cuz it was so heavy <laughs> <laughs> um sounded phenomenal but it was 40,000 1100 kilos yeah yeah so, so i gave that up and got a jazz bass but um did that for a long time and then yeah just got into live sound cuz of um just basic interest in it and yep. now it's taken off and now it's a almost like a legitimate thing like a real job like a real <laughs> yeah adult <laughs> business thing <laughs> very cool and you yeah. did you build a studio at your place is that where uh, yeah you so, guys film yeah that's where we are now but it's looking the other way to the videos we do okay gotcha this is what this is what we look at this, yeah yeah which For is people with the special glasses once again. <laughs> sure. Nice one. Yeah, I, uh, I do love the experience, yeah. So when, when I hear you mm. guys talk about stuff, I'm, I'm, I know you're taking stuff on the stages or you've got the ear, sure. you know how things are working in a, oh, cool. in Hopefully, a yeah. professional <laughs> sense, yeah, mm. which, is, which is very cool. So how did you guys start the show? So you say about eight years. What were the, the origins of it? Well, once upon a time. Yeah, yeah in a land far, far away. Um, there was a beautiful prince. That's me. <laughs> no, where's this going? Well, I think I think we started. We kind of got together every once in a while and just kind of fiddled with pedals, <laughs> for lack of a yeah. better word. And wasn't it Zoe, your your partner Zoe, who said you should film this? Maybe yeah, because we did watch other channels like. Um that pedal show was just getting started about the time, and of course, Brett Kingman was doing his thing. Well, actually, yeah. funnily enough, it was at the time it was still Dan from the Gig Rig. Yeah. It wasn't called that pedal show because that's that's one of the things actually. And I just want to want to clear that outright yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. We constantly <laughs> this is a safe space, Gabor. Come on, constantly, <laughs> constantly, people say to us, "Oh, you guys copy that pedal show, you know, with the name." We were actually a pedal show before they were a pedal show, so we've been around okay. for much longer. They're just much better at it and much more successful than us. But that's not our fault. <laughs> yeah, that's not your fault. <laughs> Let's not get bogged down in details. So. But, yeah, so we were actually the name Pedal Show has been around for longer than them. Anyway, continue, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the starting thing. Yeah, we just um, used to jam and make noise with – I remember there was – I think something came up on the Facebook memories the other day of um, – we had a couple of the Zvex probe pedals. Yeah. You know the, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know those? Like the – the ones with touch sensitive, touch sensitive yeah. plates, yeah. 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 And um we had a couple of those hooked up in in conjunction with some other noise things and just absolutely just making terrible noises. Whilst giggling and, uh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh this is a this is amazing. <clears throat> and uh that kind of stuff. So we we're just making noise and you know, plugging things in anyway. So we thought we may as well have a crack at, you know, doing some ourselves. And it took a while to get the flow. Like the early ones are pretty clunky, like yeah. Neither of us are actors or come from a TV world or anything, being in front of a camera. Sure. No. I mean, look, so, looking at me, you wouldn't think so, you know, with this yeah, Hollywood great, face great that great I've face got. Yeah, for radio. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, actually, I was talking about YouTube with um, someone recently. I don't think it was to do with guitar, but just YouTube in general. And um, the, it kind of seems that the people that are successful with YouTube – were already doing what they were doing before they even thought about filming it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if you're into, say, cooking, you're already a chef or already loved cooking mm. every night and, and experiment all the time yeah. with ingredients. Or if you're into sports or whatever the subject is, you're already into that and you just want to share it with the world and then it becomes a bit more of a thing and yeah. maybe even a, a professional income. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of 
I guess, how we started. We're doing it anyway. And I think one yeah, of the things cool. we had going for us too was, uh, I think, I think two things. One was even back in those days when we filmed in your little unit that you lived in 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 Parisian, mm. you had the big console behind you, which looked cool yeah, having a console there. Plus, <laughs> um, Alex's partner Zoe is a photographer, so we had access okay. to lights, we had access to cameras and tripods and all that sort of stuff. Oh, nice. Um, so we had kind of access to the gear, plus we had that kind of cool-looking backdrop. Yeah. Um, uh, with the which kind of I thought you know for doing music stuff it looks cool sitting in front of a console. Um, and yeah, it sort of so happened to work, and then it, yeah, it also so happened that very early on we got some good feedback from people. Like I think one of the very first videos we did, maybe within the first five videos we did was some All Blood Noise Endeavors stuff and the guys from All Blood Noise Endeavors contacted us uh, saying, oh, you know, we're like what, we, what you're doing. And very early on, Henning as well from HP42 contacted us and said, oh. Uh, oh, I like what you guys do. The backdrop looks really nice. If, you know, he said something like, if I if I had the time to watch YouTube stuff, I would watch you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> uh, so it was very early on we got some good feedback and I think it just made us more eager to keep pursuing it and doing it yeah that's cool that's yeah. cool and again at the time you know you're you're getting in on uh i think it was a good wave for for people getting into that space yeah and i mean it was it was also not not saying that we are you know we are um revolutionaries or anything like that but it was in those days that was nowhere near as many youtube channels as there is now I mean, in those days, I, I remember when we started, I, listen, I was listening to 60 Cycle Hum a lot, but okay. they rarely did videos. The video side of what they did didn't come till later. And okay. that was sort of one of the reasons why we started a podcast too, because we thought, let's do, a, let's do both worlds, which at the yeah, time okay. was, didn't really have, wasn't really going on. Um, yeah. And then 60 Cycle Hum sort of took that and, and put it to, took it to a whole new level. And now there's so many other um, podcasts that also have a YouTube site and both, but in, back then there wasn't really much of that around. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, what, one thing I really enjoy about this show it's, it's the super fun, awesome, happy time pedal <laughs> show. So lots and lots of pedals. Yeah, um, but you guys do guitars, you do uh, software plugins, um, you do some hardware stuff. I think just in the last twenty four mm. hours, you did some two note interfaces. Yeah, the, the oh, Revolt. Yeah. Oh, that looks cool. Gabor yeah. is showing us now. For people's special glasses. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you do fun stuff like um, the DOD pedals, which I know is a, a soft spot for <laughs> Gabor, for want, want of a better phrase. That's um, my stupidity, yeah. That's me. The <laughs> the King of Tone shootout, which included a Zoom 505. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yep, yep. We were just talking about that the other day um, with uh, uh, with Matt and Rob. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, you've got to keep it fun. You've got to keep it I – th well, I think I think so many people take this stuff so incredibly seriously. Yeah, <laughs> and sure. you're just going to not – Did you guys – sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Did you guys ever see the shootout between an original clon and a Miko Stomp? Miko <laughs> – whatever it's called. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that sort of stuff. I love. I live for that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes. I get and the clon and a metal zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you yeah. hear the and clon, you go, okay. Oh, what if, if they what if, <laughs> have they modded the metal zone? And then no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think whoever did those videos did, took it one step further and had a clon and a carrot. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. 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 But I like that stuff. And what I find myself, um, as you do, you, 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 know, you troll through secondhand gear and you, and you think, you know, what if someone's done a review of this? And inevitably, uh, you guys have done <laughs> some old weird gear. That So I like how you're doing like the, the new stuff and, and, and older stuff as well. Actually, we've, we've talked about that on a podcast where we're kind of, I'm almost a year or so of 40, Gabor's over 40. Yeah, I mean, but, what? Well, no, what? Well, <laughs> I yes. mean, tw you, you mean twenty? Yeah, hundred and four. <laughs> you kids, <laughs> you youngsters. <laughs> yeah, but it's all that stuff from the nineties where yeah. we kind of start reminiscing now. Like, oh, I remember that from guitar magazines, and I remember that from you know, like a trade show or like a yeah. TV, from a uh, VHS or something, whatever it was. And um, so now, all that a lot of that nineties stuff is kind of becoming, um, well, well, it's obviously cheap and. You just pick it up for next to nothing. Yeah, it's also like this um, 
nostalgic thing about it's, it. It's, yeah. Sadly, it's vintage now, isn't it? So yeah. um, vintage digital is a yeah. thing. Retro, digital, and it's sort of having a having a revival almost to a certain degree. Some of the '90s stuff, and yeah, and, sure. and yeah, I mean, for us, it's more. Because I think both of us were talking about that. We have a the, the Zoom 505. That's one of the reasons why we use it. It was one of the first things we both had. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I just thought I, I just thought it would be funny doing the the shootout between the <laughs> the you know a King of Tone, an original Marshall Blues Breaker, the yeah. and, and I mean doing that with the with the the Helix. You know, I think that was when the Helix. Um, That's right. When yep. it first announced, you know, when it first had the. The firmware update with that stuff in it, and, and I just thought, wouldn't it be funny <laughs> if yeah. we throw a Zoom Five or Five in it? And the funny thing is, if you look through the comments, quite a lot of people actually yeah. picked because for people that did, don't know, we we did two videos. So we did one video where we did a blind shootout, and we said to people, "Tell us, you know, A, B, C, or D. Which one did you like best?" And I think we did two clips. You played, Alex played once, and I played once, and yes. it was yeah. slightly different stuff. And uh, I mean, this is years ago now as well. I don't remember really exactly what we did, but I just remember. Okay, write in the comments which one did you like best and which one did you think was which. And a lot of people <laughs> yeah. put the five or five down as the, that's the the real, you know, the real king of tone. And I just yeah. thought it's funny how you know our perception of stuff is so visual, you know, and mm. musicians are so and guitar players in particular. This whole industry is so product and visual driven um yeah 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 and instagram inst yeah instagrammable and and what's yeah. the current trendy thing you know at the yeah. moment and that's the only thing that's good and nothing else is good and i just it wouldn't be fun we should do more of that sort of stuff take old yeah. crappy old stuff and <laughs> and i've got a sure. bunch of old you know Ak old akai multi-effects units and stuff like that we should we should use them <laughs> and shoot them out get get one of our friends we've got two friends believe it or not who have okay. clones Proper clones. Yeah. <laughs> There's more to that sentence. There's more to okay. that. We have two, we have, <laughs> I have two friends. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> we have proper clones. We should invite them both over and do a shootout with like an old Akai, yeah. you know, plastic. Yeah. A silver clone, a gold clone. <laughs> <laughs> gold clone versus silver clone versus Zoom 505 versus yeah. Akai shred. What is it called? Shred something. Shred. All shred oh, something. Did it have the had the rocker? The rocker on it, and a, and a fake tube that lights up. <laughs> <laughs> shred. Oh, where, oh, oh God! What is it? Hang wasn't on, okay. shred? Wasn't shred master? Was it? Because that's, no, it that's was, the Marshall pedal. It was the, oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I gotta look it up. Akai. Yeah, do it, do it. Shreds. While you're doing that, the with that zoom in the King of Tone shootout. Oh. I didn't know what the pedal sounded like. I've got the the HX Stomp, and I like the I like the Prince of Tone in that. I think it sounds great. Um, but I, don't, I didn't know. I just thought they all sounded good. And then yeah. when you pointed out which one was the Zoom, I went, "Oh, okay, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it just seemed a little thicker in in some of the lower mids, aka muddier. But you could you could you could dial that out if you wanted to. Like I was amazed. I thought they all sounded good. Well, funny story with that actually also is. Uh, that's my old that I had from the nineties. My old um, Zoom five hundred five, okay. and I hadn't plugged it in for years before I took yeah. it to Alex's. I just remember that, and remember the the plus minus buttons didn't work, so oh, we yeah. couldn't change oh, okay. any presets. So we found the oh, preset okay. on it that sounded kind of cool, and then we actually made tried to make the other pedals sound like the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, because <laughs> they have these little toggle things on the side, and yeah. they always get, always get like on us crap in them and then it yeah, fills yeah. up and they'd, they'd stay down they'd like lock it's, down yeah yeah and then it would just go, do, 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 go through all and go to zero <laughs> or go to 10 <laughs> yeah. you know so you couldn't adjust by the way i just looked at it's a shred o -matic. oh that's right okay yes. shred o -matic. Yeah. that's that great we should name. do a video with that we should do great yeah, name. yeah. Yep. man it's good it's good yeah that's so funny <laughs> the 505s I'm, I'm a bit older my my nostalgic is all from the 80s which is stupid yeah. expensive now. So, fellas, buy all the 90s cheap stuff now because yeah. <laughs> in five, ten years, it's going to be bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> well, even I – Yeah, totally. Like, Sorry, go, if, you go. If only you had the time machine to go back 10, 15 years and start buying up stuff. Yeah, man. Like, if I had kept even, some of that stuff yeah. I sold. As, anyway, we've all got that Well, I, slo I slowly started getting into rack stuff and I sort of slowly bought, started buying stuff because it was so cheap. But then, what, what stuff did you say? Rack like, oh, rack. Uh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Rack you, like, like I've got, again, if you have the special glasses, it's behind me. Uh, mm. But a lot of that stuff got so expensive so quickly all of a sudden. Other people got into rack gear as well. And 
Yeah. When I first started getting into it, I sort of started collecting it and, and, and kind of going, oh, whenever I see something cheap, I buy it. And then I see something cheap and I go, oh, I'm sure I can see it cheaper. And I didn't buy it. But if I would have bought it, now it's worth, I don't know, 10 times as much, you know? So yeah. it's... That's it. There's Zoom 1201. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's up on the... I can't They're see great. Um, it's, it's an actual Japanese-made Zoom rack effects. Yeah. There you go. MIJ Zoom. Come on. Yeah, like it was 40 bucks or something well, yeah, locally. W- well, the Zoom 5 <laughs> of 5 is Japanese-made. That whole series was Japanese-made. So it's made really? in Japan... It's good quality stuff. It's plastic, but it's good quality plastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why hasn't JHS done a, a video on the 505 and just blown it up yet? Well, I mean, again, we're sort of trendsetters, so he's waiting for us, and then he, uh, he's going to take the glory, of course, Josh. As yeah, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny thing, though. You say, like, about guitarists being visual and – I've heard. Um, I think Peter Northcote when on this show he said, um, uh, "Yeah, guitarists play with their listen with their eyes a lot." So Absolutely. he would, if he plays a gem on a gig, people are like, "What are you playing that for? Why aren't you playing your your Les Paul or whatever?" Um, mm. But he says it sounds just as good or sounds better for certain things or you know all that kind of thing. What what do you make of stuff like like Josh Scott? He'll talk up a, a pedal like I think. One of the recent ones was the uh, the Distortion Factory, the DF7. Yeah. Then the prices go bonkers. I know at the moment, um, if you can find a PV Juice, the little combo amp, which is not so much a gear channel yeah. thing, it, it's it's become the Josh Holm secret Josh sound Holm, yeah, amp. Yeah. Then those things go for stupid money when you couldn't give them away three weeks ago. What, what do you guys make of that phenomena? You go. You go. Well. Yeah. What do you think? What do I think? Uh, well, yeah. yeah. See, I think, again, and, uh, the, the thing I always find funny, look, I, I don't know Josh. I never met, and, you know, jo- just, uh, you know, uh, anyone from JHS. I've never interacted with anyone from JHS, so I don't know them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they always go, oh, you know, it, it's like the clon thing, you know, with the dude who writes on it saying, you know, this is not my making. Of course it's your making. <laughs> right. Don't pretend it's not your making. You, you're an influencer, and especially with, you know, with JHS, they're, they're a company, but they're a massive YouTube channel. Of course, they're an influencer. Of course, when they show stuff, mm. uh, especially if it's cheap stuff and it sounds good, uh, yeah. of course, it's going to explode, you know. Um, but that's just the way people are. It's just – if it, it, that's the thing. I mean, I've been collecting DoD and Digitech stuff for years, right? Uh-huh. And people were laughing at me at first. Cause, I mean, originally all that, and again, it's a wall you can't yeah. see, but I've got a lot of DOD pedals. Um, and at first, you know, literally it was $10, $20 I bought most of them for. Mm-hmm. But then eventually, again, also through JHS and the JHS show, um, they showed a lot of that stuff. And now some of the prices, you know, the stuff I bought five years ago for $15 now goes for three hundred dollars, and actually, I'm I'm a bit annoyed because I've never bought a distortion factory. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and now it's too expensive because um, I've got a lot of the other Digitech pedals. Um, and now okay. he just the other day posted the the Bad Monkey pedal, and I have a feeling that's going to go through the roof, which is a great pedal. It's basically a tube screamer, a modif- like a slightly more yeah, flexible, with- more Q kind of tube EQ, screamer. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, Brian Wampler has been talking that pedal up for years. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's the same with him. Not less with him because his channel isn't quite as big and he's not as, as um, you know, Josh, Josh Scott is sort of almost like a, he's like a cartoon character almost to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he has a kind of thing and he, he comes across very likable in a very sarcastic sort of way, sort of that yeah. super sarcastic, super... You know, very few emotions shown kind of cartoon character, which is very likable. I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm saying it's yeah, very sure. likable. And whereas Brian Wampler is more the the nerdy guy, um, and he doesn't maybe doesn't come across to as many people as because I mean he's been doing it for way longer. The Wampler thing. I mean, I used to do the podcast mm-hmm. um, uh, on video as well. They did that podcast oh, okay. years and years and yep. years ago. Um, the uh, the Tonet Tonet podcast is that what it's called Tone? Chasing Tone Chasing Tone podcast that's the one that's the one that's yeah. the thing and he does it with Blake from the Tone and Blake mob, joined think. later on yeah yeah um, yeah yeah but yeah I mean of course these prices go up people see it it's monkey see monkey do again nothing against people watching <laughs> YouTube stuff I mean our viewers <laughs> do but it is a little bit monkey see monkey do and yeah yeah you know you, you are an influencer and we have minor influence 
he has a huge channel and has major influence. So if we show mm-hmm. something, of course it's going to blow up. Mm. Hmm. That's my opinion Alex? anyway. Good then. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think, Alex? Uh, yeah, definitely as an influencer, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I didn't say so, it's a bad thing at all. No, no, no. Um, so that um, to the point that he doesn't just use it as a promotional tool for his own company. He's like, hey, check out what these other awesome yeah, people make. Yeah. They make really fun stuff that um, I want to you know, check out. And, and sometimes they even like um, some of those people in, inspired by other pedals because they love them so much. So I think it's almost creating a scene around hopefully it's, I see this like supporting other builders and go, everyone loves electro harmonics. Look at all the cool stuff they made in the early nineties. Yeah. yeah. All the big, big boxes. Absolutely. So, but it also, it also at the same time makes him more likable because he's someone who, Oh, look, I'm not just talking about my stuff. I'm talking about yeah, other people's yeah. stuff. Mm. Um, so it gives him a more likable kind of thing. Um, you know, I oh, do you think that's intentional. I think it's very intentional because I think JHS, there was a, 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 a time, period just think back you know we did a couple of jhs videos Mm -hmm. relatively early on of pedals we bought we never work with them they never wanted to work with us they still don't want to work with us so you know and and it's i'm not bitter in any way shape or form i'm just saying um they no 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 but 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 jhs went through a phase with people when we did videos with jhs pedals there were a lot of very negative comments towards jhs and towards josh scott um, and I think the YouTube channel and the way he presents the YouTube channel, he's smart. He's definitely a smart guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that in any way negatively at all, but he knows, he, he found a way of how to make himself come across more likable. But again, becoming this kind of super sarcastic, super dry, almost cartoon character. I mean, to me, the JHS show, it's almost like a, like a cartoon, uh-huh. almost, you know, like a real life person cartoon. Um, the way he interacts and this is very, I love, I'm, I'm all about sarcasm. So I love, I love him being sarcastic, but it makes him much, I think much more likable to other people that he's not just talking about himself. He shows, he, he, he almost the channel, if you look at the channel as a whole, is less about JHS stuff and more about everything else. Yeah, he, he obviously loves pedals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a massive collector and loves it, but yeah. I think it, it's intentional to a certain degree because it makes him more likable. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think uh, send your hate comments to <laughs> <laughs> Gabor at he's a yeah. dot com. <laughs> no, it's it's a big deal, and yeah, he's one of the big fish for sure. So yeah. fun to talk about. Can I ask you guys some nuts and bolts about YouTube channels? And if you can pass or play, if there's okay. any trade secrets you want to talk about, just tell me to get lost, and I will. <laughs> um, I'll move on. Okay, number one, how do you guys get stuff? Because you guys work with – this is another cool thing about your show. You work with some very independent, boutique, one-man or one-woman show uh, organizations, but you work with some really big companies as well like Yamaha, Line 6, yep. Boss and Roland. So, yeah, how, how do you guys get stuff? I assume you're not buying every single piece of gear on no, your show anymore. No, 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 we, we We definitely don't. Well, I guess I'll answer that because I do most of that. So um, – I've recently, I've sort of really, uh, so f- at first it was just sending a lot of emails to a lot of companies. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, we were l- lucky enough to, through friends that we made and that I made when I went to 42 Gear Street, for example, guys like Henning and um, yeah. uh, also uh, people like um, 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 Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum and, um, you know, a few of those people, they sort of introduced us to brands and, um, you know, they were very helpful in the early stages. But a lot of it is just persistent email sending. Um, there's companies like Fender. I think I've sent them 50 emails over the years. I got one reply once saying that we will forward it to the to the right department, but they never heard back from them ever again. But it was just a lot of persistent email sending. And then um, we started doing a bunch of Australian – Mostronics was sort of one of the first that – he. Okay. Andrew just sends us everything, and Andrew's awesome. I mean, we love Andrew. We've become good yeah. friends with Andrew, and he pretty much sends us everything he makes. And But then through that, I got into some sort of – there's some groups on Facebook that are all about Australian-made gear, 
And whenever people sort of post saying, oh, I'm making these pedals, I was right down the bottom. You know, we're more than happy to do videos. We, we sort of our policy is if you're an Australian manufacturer of anything guitar related, whether it's guitars, amps, pedals, anything, send it to us. We'll do a video. We, we don't charge a cent. We just send us the pedal. We'll do a video for you because we're trying to promote Australian gear because there's so much good stuff being made. But all the main YouTube channels are overseas. And even guys like Brett Kingman and stuff, I mean, yeah. he's the granddaddy of, of YouTube videos, basically, him and Andy Martin. But, um, you know, he's maybe a little less inclined to work with smaller, you know, tiny little builders who can't afford to pay them, pay him anything. So I sort of always throw it out there. If there's any Australian makers, we are always happy to try and promote any of their stuff whenever we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort of snowballed and it, we're kind of, I guess, maybe a bit known amongst the Australian builders because, I, I mean, th the thing also is, and that's worldwide, a, a lot of these builders, they talk to each other, they, they're friends. It's not a hyper-competitive industry where people try to backstab each other. From what yeah. I've learned over the years, it's very friendly industry and everyone, a lot of people know each other and they're all friends and they help each other out. And I think even within Australia, it's becoming to there's there's starting to be this. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's a it, you know it's a it's a it's a little group of people, and they all know each other, and it's sort of like oh you know if you want some videos done, get those two goofy yeah, guys yeah, in yeah. Queensland, and they'll they'll do it for you. And it's sort of it's snowballing, and hopefully it's introducing uh, and helping you know people small Australian builders introducing them to to an audience you know around the world and it, it may be in australia but not just in australia but around the world yeah that's cool i think um a couple of points you made brian wampler told me when when he was on this show um he said yeah the the pedal industry is it's a cool vibe it's yeah it's it's mm -hmm. not super competitive even though you know they're all they're all after the same market i guess but um so he said that and um, yeah, I love the Australian thing. I've I've got friends in the UK that'll say something like, oh, "Have you heard of Past Effects? They're from Australia." Yeah, and I'm like, "Yeah, look, here's some videos from." And I mean, Past of, Past Effects on top of it, it's a female, and that's yeah. a, that's something that's very rare. Very that's there's there's Fran from Fran Tone. Yeah, there was Devi Eva, well, sort of female, and. Um, uh, there's there aren't really many. I mean, I, I'm sorry if there's probably more, but um, yeah, and Verley from Past Effects. There's very few females, and they make really good stuff. Past Effect, really, really good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dig, um, I dig the the C one clone. Oh, it's great. Mm. That was so yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how you get something. You mentioned like money and payment. Um, Brett Kingman, he he was on this show too early on, and. He said, basically, he started doing the videos for fun, and then it got so busy. He said, "Well, I'm going to charge for my time." And he was—he's—he's he's always really upfront with all that stuff. So that's—that's yeah. that's good. You see, that's a certain business model. Um, can I ask you guys then? How do you, uh, and again, pass or play? But how do you make money from the show then? So you're—you've got a slightly different business model. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, we we do charge for videos, but it's more um, big companies or maybe Asian-based companies that do you know, bulk batches of mini pedals and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, there is some revenue off YouTube, but not a lot. Yeah. No. So, um, yeah, so there's there's a few bucks, but it mostly goes into making the show run and yes, occasional toys for us. Because I mean, there's ongoing costs, and I mean, there's I, I've, I've mm. bought I've bought now three, four cameras and lenses and stuff, and that's that's a few thousands every time you look at a new camera. Light stuff, lights, and and because we're you know you're always trying to make things a little bit better. And um, but yeah, I mean, YouTube mm. for people that don't know. So basically, whenever you watch a YouTube video and there's an ad at the start or during or little like a little banner ad down the bottom, that's mm. basically put there by the person that makes the video. Or who, who runs the channel, and um, for every one of those things, Google, who owns YouTube, um, pay us money for it. Um, so, and it's it's th that's where they. I mean, it, depending on who watches it, it's ads targeted specifically for the that's sort yeah. of that whole metadata thing. Yeah. Um, so it's specifically targeted to every viewer, and that gives us um, a, a revenue, which is nowhere near enough to live off. I mean. Not even remotely. I mean, it's probably, you know, I make what we get in a month, uh, one gig, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roughly. Right. But I mean, yeah. it's 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 not much. But um, 
uh, it's it it does we pull we pull that money and it's ongoing costs you know um yeah. Because as you know, you've got to pay someone to host your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got to – yeah, there's lots of stuff. Sure. SD sure. cards break, you know, external hard disks die, cameras break. I don't know. Things break. Things happen. you got to buy new stuff. Yeah. What about like affiliate stuff? So I think – I don't know if you're still doing it, but um, I think uh, you were working with Celestion, like Celestion IRs. You were, had like a – uh, affiliate this, program sort of thing. It, it, I don't think I've ever. There's there's never been enough for us to withdraw it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit, uh, and you know, there's there's very little. I mean, I could, and that's the thing. I think uh, uh, I, I'm I'm too busy. I, I just I don't have the time because the thing is, you could do these things with. We have some affiliate links with Amazon, and we have some affiliate links with yeah, a few right. other pe- places. But the thing is, they constantly change, and you've got to go back to all the videos and change all the affiliate links, and it's just an extra thing, you know. When you yeah, sit there, yeah. and it takes you, you know, I don't know how many hours to make one video, and then I finally upload it, and then I go to the thumbnail, and you got to do all the, the chapter marks and all the stuff. Last thing I feel like doing is trying yeah. to find affiliate links, and 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 because you've got to create the link, you've got to upload the link. I did a few with eBay, and I did a few with Reverb, and then. Mm-hmm. The link changed and wasn't active anymore, and then I, and then you got to go back to all the old videos and find where it was and redo sure. it. And it's just if maybe if I was a full time YouTuber, um, I would do more of that. But I just I I don't have the time or patience to do it. So there's very 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 little from affiliate links. Gotcha, gotcha. There was a thing. Um, it seemed to be a big deal for a few weeks <laughs> a little while ago. Uh, it's the contains paid promotion little banner. That that we started to see. What's can you explain what that means and and why so that may an, or may not be important. Every single one of our videos, um, and some people I don't know. Some people have an issue. So the thing is, and it's 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 funny, right? So you go and watch a James Bond movie. Not that I'm yeah. comparing us to a James Bond movie. You know, well, maybe well, similar sort of. You're you know, both very dashing. The production is similar, and you know, I'm quite buff. But um, <laughs> and the Aston, Aston, the Aston Martin, Martin I drive. The Aston know, Martin, um, the chase scene at the yeah. start of every video. <laughs> <laughs> I always like that. All, all the Bond girls, you know. The, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah the, it's the, the, the super fun, awesome, happy time girls uh, that that are always just <laughs> out of shot. You can't see him, but um, that's a whole different. Topic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But but no, but in all reality, no. But the, the, the funny thing, and this is the, that's kind of the strange thing I find <laughs> with all this stuff, right? You go and watch a James Bond movie, or you, I'm just saying James Bond, yeah. just because it's the first thing that popped into my head. Sure. And you see him, I don't know, have a Rolex watch on, and you see him yeah. drive a Aston Martin, and you or a BMW, or you see, I don't know, them drink a Pepsi or a Coke, and. Yeah. That, you know, Aston Martin for having an Aston Martin in a James Bond movie, they supplied the cars and they paid millions and millions of dollars for that to be in there. And Pepsi would pay millions and millions of dollars for the Pepsi to be in there. But it's implied in movies and TV shows, it's implied that the viewer knows that. So they don't have to say anything. It's implied that the viewer knows it. Hmm. On YouTube, for some reason, uh, as soon as it, so, okay, technically, so where I'm sitting here, right? So people can't see it, but there's a whole bunch of pedals behind me. Yeah. So if you watch any of the videos, our videos, um, the ones that I, let's say any of the software related videos that are at my place, where you see my backdrop with all the pedals behind it. So even if I don't use any of that stuff, but it's in view, something that was provided to us by someone, I have to legally write, includes paid promotion so i don't have to use it i don't have to talk about it if it's in picture anything that was given to us i it has to be legally stated that it includes paid promotion so every single one of our videos if you're not talking about no even if the video is not about that product no even if i talk about something completely different even if it's some i bought i play a guitar i bought into an amp i bought through a pedal i bought but there's a pedal behind me. I don't know. I'm just going to say one, this one given to us by Amplitude. This was sent to us by Amplitude. So technically, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone really polices it or not, but technically, as soon as anything is in frame that is was given to us, you have to classify it as advertising because in YouTube, it is not implied that the viewer knows that. Okay. Um, now, as soon as you do that – Probably 30% of your audience goes, oh, you're a shill. We're not watching what you're doing. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Even though people, that, that, I mean, because that's the thing. It's and, and again, I'm I'm the grumpy old guy here out of the two of us. Alex is the young under forty guy. I'm the grumpy old over forty guy. <laughs> um, people assume they know what's going on, but they don't. Unless you're doing something, you don't know what's going on. So people assume as soon as you say includes paid promotion, ah, oh, this was given to them by brand X, and brand X told them to. You know, you got to say it's the greatest thing ever because, you know, if you don't, why would Brand X give it to you? Which is the furthest from the truth. No one has ever told us to say, you know, you got to say it's great or else. Okay. They don't say that to us. No one has ever done that to me. And I know a lot of other YouTubers who have way, way, way bigger YouTube channels than us. And no one ever says that to them either. Um, yeah. But you just got to do it. You got to. It is. It's. And now it's even to the point where I always say, you know, this is supplied by such and such. Just yeah, so people yeah. don't, you know. And I think the way we've been doing videos lately as well, we give our opinions, but we always, it's more about what is your opinion as a viewer? What do you think yeah, about okay. it? Yeah. Because our opinion is one thing. Because I mean, it's, it's so subjective too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's also an interesting thing too is to start a discussion. Yeah. Of videos, not just a. You know, an ad or a demo. It's like, you know, we, we play it through our playing style with our guitars and our amp, but what do you guys think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it comes back the other way and we learn things. And Yeah, absolutely. So try and, I don't know, it's such a bit of a wanky thing, but start a conversation in a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause and it is a community. We have to do it for the fun of it, so why not it's such, help each other out? It is such oh, a yeah. cool community because there are yeah. people that constantly comment and they, they talk to each other and to interact yeah. and from all over the yeah, world, and it, it is, is a community. And you see people that comment on our videos that also comment on heaps of other YouTube channels' videos mm. that watch all of them, and it sort of becomes a community. And um, But I think, I mean, that's one of the things with our channel as well. I think, the, I don't know if that's the way you approach it, but the way I approach it almost is uh, – it's just two guys sitting in a room showing a third guy sitting in a room, you know, a, mm -hmm. you know, two friends showing a third friend how, oh, this is cool. Check this out. And then go, oh, what are your thoughts? You know, that's sort of the, that's kind of the idea behind our channel. This episode is brought to you by Fretboard Biology, a comprehensive online guitar course put together by Joe Elliott, ex-head of guitar at the Guitar Institute of Technology and the McNally Smith College of Music. I was one of the beta testers for the course and can say as a music educator, I was really impressed by the logical sequence of learning. The course has also been endorsed by players such as Brett Garson and Greg Cock. For more details, check out the links in our show notes. Okay, um, pop quiz. Matt. Hot shot, yes. What a... <laughs> <laughs> what other um, what other channels do you watch, and why do you like them? Oh, oh good, good question. Funny, funny time to ask me this. I've just um, two weeks ago I deactivated Facebook temporarily. Just sure. never it's done horrible. it in ten years. It's horrible, Facebook. It's horrible. So, well, there's See? grumpy old man. Well, there's a great yeah yeah. There's I mean there's a great uh, super fun awesome happy time pedal show forum which which I have enjoyed being uh, a member of. <laughs> yes, um, but at the moment I'm not going. So I'm spending a little bit more time on YouTube. Uh, so, sure. okay. am I scrolling less? Maybe not. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just a different app. <laughs> but it's more discerning. Less cat videos, unless I want the cat videos now. So that's good. <laughs> okay, sorry to answer your question. So, you guys, <laughs> there are you guys. Why do I like you guys? Well, I, I, I feel like I know. I've done a bunch of stuff with Gabor, and I've seen you enough, Alex. So when we meet in in cyber sure, yeah. reality tonight, I think, well, I've talked to Alex on the chat board, and I've listened to you so many times. Um, so yeah, I like the relaxed, uh, vibe and yeah, that idea that you're just, you're presenting what something does. Yeah. I used to watch a lot of, uh, that pedal show. Um, mm -hmm. I know Dan, I knew Dan when he was in Sydney for a little while oh, in cool. between Brisbane and, and the UK. Um, so super stoked for, for what he's done mm. with the gig rig and, and everything. That's, that's awesome. Oh, that show, right. I like that show cause I, I feel like I've learned a lot from, from that show. They'll, um, I've never, I've never watched a video and then oh, I have to get that piece of gear. I've never freaked out like that. But I'll, I'll learn something like, okay, that's why a big muff sounds different to a fuzz face. Or mm. okay, sure. so I understand that circuit a little bit more, and then I get interested in in pursuing that those kind of ideas. So yeah, that show because I learned something from that. Um, 
What else am I, I watching? I, do, I, I listen to lots of podcasts, and I guess that's how I got into podcasting because um, I was a mm-hmm. fan of the medium and and guitars in, in, in specific as, as a player. Um, sure. So, yeah, I don't know. Does that, I don't know if that answers your question. There's only two yeah, very I'm... brief examples. Oh, there is a guy <laughs> I've been watching a lot lately called Jonathan Cordy. Oh, yeah, the English dude, answer. yeah. I don't know him. English dude. There's a lot of some um, ambient way... sort of stuff and lots of helix stuff. He's really into the HX yeah. stomp, which which I play and love. So I've learned a lot from from that. And he's super. He gets sent some things, I think, because he's becoming well known. He gets sent the old mm-hmm. guitar. Yeah. But he will always say, "I got sent this, or I bought this with my own money." Yeah. And he he same similar vibe to you guys. Like, what do you think? What do you reckon yeah. about this? The only thing that annoys me about him is, and this is just my my nerdiness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He just, I think he just uses the camera microphone. Get a better microphone. The audio is, for his talking, the audio annoys me yeah. when he's talking. It's it's not. The guitar sounds awesome. The guitar but sounds yeah. great, but the audio when he's talking, yeah. get a better microphone, man. That's the thing that always, <laughs> this is, that, that's what happens when you start doing this kind of stuff. You go, you pick up on all these stupid things, but which for most yeah, people right. probably it makes no difference. But I always, every time I watch one of his videos, I go, oh, just use another microphone for your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. So yeah, there's they, the main ones. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. there's so much. There's so much content these days. Oh god, it's, there's so it's, much. Yeah. It's bonkers. And not just guitar too. Like lots of other things. Yeah, I watched I, a really cool tra- travel program guy Kiwi dude this afternoon. Uh huh. He went to um, uh, Lagos. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The city in Nigeria. Yeah. And there's 25 million people there. Wow. I had no idea. It's the population of it's our like country. It's Australia, just about. It's, yeah. Wow, far he's, out. He said everyone's super lovely. and I said, It's all that st- sort of stuff too. It's, yeah. it's, it's interesting when you share a YouTube channel with someone because you start finding out what they watch because he often watches stuff oh, while yeah. being logged into the, our YouTube channel. And then oh, okay. it recommends stuff. And I go, what? <laughs> Why does it recommend this woodworking thing? <laughs> or this around the world guy on a, on some little yacht or something like that. It goes around the yeah, world yeah. and some stuff like that. Yeah, and sure. it's like, ah, oh, Alex was watching this. Good. Interesting. <laughs> but it's become this platform that everyone can share what, like I was saying, what, share what they're, they yeah, like absolutely. Do. Yeah. yeah. It just so happened to film yeah. it. Yeah. They're doing it anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's whole new, yeah. I reckon probably every single community is, is maybe like the guitar community as well. Maybe like, mm. yeah. you know, you get the narcs on there, the super critical people. Um, you <laughs> oh, know, you're not using the Makita for that. Oh, you've got to use the Makita for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do they have it'll Makita be, in other countries? Country. Or is that an Australian thing? Yeah. I mean, I'm into Star Wars and I, I don't do any Star Wars sure. YouTube, but some of those chat boards on Facebook. Get, oh, get, man, people get angry. Get militant. Yeah, they get angry. It's like militant. <laughs> That's a great word. I'm going to steal that. Militant. <laughs> it's a movie about laser swords. Come on. Just relax. <laughs> you know it's not real, right? <laughs> Don't but say that, man. <laughs> you know, they didn't film that part in space. That was, that was a, a green Yes, space. they but, did, Matt. They did. <laughs> an actual galaxy far, far away. What happens to gear then? People send you gear. Mm-hmm. Um, you got sent five Psy guitars, for example. That video went viral. It went bonkers, by the way. I love that. Um, what okay. happens to the side guitars? Or anything. People send you stuff. Do you post it back? Do you get to keep it? Do you sell it to buy food? Do you, what, what <laughs> food? Ha- food we don't eat. That's uh, ramen. Ramen mostly. mostly yeah, we're, 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 we're all <laughs> about ramen. You would. Uh, it depends on the gear. Hey, like it depends on. Oh, so the other part of that question from earlier on is where do we get gear from? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the bigger companies, so in Australia, if you're not from here, um, how it works is there'll be companies in Australia that import bigger brands, uh, distributors. So they might do three or four guitar brands, and then maybe some woodwind and piano, and then sell to music shops. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've become um, friends and have a re- business relationships with um, Roland Boss Australia yeah. and the company that does Yamaha Line Six and those yeah. kind of things. So it depends on the product. Some things have to go back, but a lot of stuff stays. Okay. So and um, yeah. what we do with it depends on the gear. Yeah, a lot of yeah, times sure. if it's if it's a distributor, because I guess Australia is such a small market compared to you yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, we're such a small country compared to you know America with 
you know, on the ten, more than ten times as many people as in Australia. And um, uh, uh, yeah, so the bigger companies usually want stuff back uh, because it's the it, the okay. bigger companies go through distribution, and a distribution can't really afford to give us stuff. Um, and oftentimes they have like a demo unit yeah. too that gets sent around the country. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So you see other people. I've I've sent stuff to to I don't know Leon Todd over to WA. Okay. The, the, the distributor gives me his address and says, "Can you post it to him directly?" I've gotten stuff from him. I've gotten stuff from Brett Kingman sent directly to me. Um, yeah. And stuff you know, so you, you, you all kind of shared. It's funny. There's a a whole bunch of if you if you if you subscribe to a whole bunch of Australian YouTube channels who do this yeah. you know review stuff. Um, and I don't know, for example, new MXR pedal comes out. Uh, you will see them all being released at similar times and sort of usually yes. one, currently staggered by a few days, one after the other, because it goes to one, then they do the video, okay. then it goes to the next one, <laughs> then they do a video. The and it's the same, same unit, one. most likely, that just goes between all the different YouTube channels. And Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, companies like MXR, Jim Dunlop, uh, Way Huge, um, Yamaha, Line 6, um, a boss well and then sometimes you know if we if we really love some of the gear some of the distributors will go i'll just keep it just hang on to it then it's all right you uh-huh. know uh maris that's another company um that's that's mm. studio connections here in australia um most of it has to go back uh if we deal directly with um companies so whether they're in yeah. australia or overseas usually what we say is that um we want part of the deal is that we get to keep the product that is sent to us. So the Psy guitars, for example, um, Alex has got a few yeah. of them. I've got a few of them. We've used them extensively in a lot of videos. So I mean, there's a there's a yeah. there's multiple millions of views that Psy got from us yes. throughout all the videos that we've used yeah. them in and still use them in. Um, so yeah, so I mean, the, the way people got and again, this is this whole thing that oh, you just get given it stuff. So of course you're going to say it's good. So they send you more stuff. But that's not the way it is. It's they send us the stuff, and we get to keep it because we promote it for them, and we put a lot of work and effort into making videos for that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we, mo- I think the this- most of the stuff we keep. Let's say it that way. Yeah. I think there's only one or two videos we just haven't done because we did just didn't think it was good at all. <laughs> that was like my some- next question, Alex. Tell some- me more about oh, right. that. But that's rare, very yeah. rare. Yeah, only a couple, eh? Hey? Like the like little cheap Chinese. Mini pedals or something. There was a couple of those. I can't yeah, there was brand, some of that stuff, and you plug it in, and some you go, "Ah, oh, this isn't really any just, good." And then we just don't do the video. But um, I, I can't okay. legitimately try and sell it because it's not yes. sellable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's probably just one of those things. Like if you can't say anything nice, just pass and do something else. Yeah. But okay. but, so, but I think one of the things with us as well is I'm one of those idiots who most things, even if it's really crap, I find something about it I like. Because okay. I just I don't know I, I and I think that's one of the that's I think partially why there's sort of a good dynamics between us between Alex and I. It's funny so people often people need to watch a few episodes to kind of get it because people I often get called that I'm really mean to Alex. Right. <laughs> you know you Alex know, why, is why, right now. Why are you so mean to Alex? You know. But then it's funny. Then they watch a few, and then you have to they watch a few shows, and then they. The same people re- reply going, "Oh, actually, I get it now. Yeah, keep doing it because it's really it's good. It's funny um, <laughs> because we're so, we we are really quite different players. Yeah, yeah. but mm. we tend to always kind of end up at the same place or similar place, but we get to it differently. But okay. I, I'm just an idiot who likes pretty much anything, and I try to make anything work. I'm yeah. I'm I'm. I'm not the kind of guy who goes, I want to sound like Steve Ray Vaughan, let's get pedals in so we sound exactly like him or John Mayer. I'm the kind of guy who goes, whatever comes in, I try to work with it to make it sound kind of, make me interested in it anyway. Uh, but yeah, very few times that we kind of went, no, that's crap, let's just not bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very few times. Well, maybe once or twice, like something actually comes um, broken. Too. Yeah, that happens oh, too. Okay. And, or not broken yet. You think it's broken? <laughs> and, uh, maybe we should just send this back. Just, to <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Is it meant yeah, to sound like this? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I guess yeah, the other- that happens. Yeah, things get damaged in the post. Like that. That's a legitimate thing. Sure. Also. I mean, especially sure. when it comes from overseas, it's such a long trip mm. to get here. 
So, you know, yep. that, it, it is yeah. a little bit of a disadvantage for us too, being so far removed from, from the rest of the world. Um, mm. But that's just the way it is. Yeah. Do it for the beaches, hey, mate? Yeah, I love, I love <laughs> the beaches. <laughs> That's well, why I'm so pale, Captain, you can tell. Captain Outdoor, with, with that tan, that studio tan you got. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, translucent. I'm one of those people, if I, if it's a full moon and I go outside, I need to put sunscreen on because I burn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For people um, overseas, there'll be a lot of overseas listeners uh, listening to this channel. Um, so I live in Sydney, the beautiful harbour city. I was on the harbour today. I don't oh, live cool. near the harbour, but we went there, had a great time. You guys are up on the... the you're north of Brisbane. You're in one of the most beautiful parts of Australia, man. It's it's so good. Well, so it's, I'm glad you're near the beaches. Yes. Gabor, it's called the Sunshine well. Coast. It's called the Sunshine Coast. But in the last two years, there's been very little sunshine and a lot of rain. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> it's false advertising. It's been a lo- lovely summer, though. It's so mild. It's been good, yeah. It hasn't been super hot. It's been um, great. And, I mean, I've got the aircon on, so it's, it's beautiful in here. So you're not getting 23 degrees. I'm, inside I'm your studio. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Hey, um, at the start of this conversation, we're talking about, um, I think we mentioned your 2022 Gear of the Year yep. awards. I want to ask you both, are you, you've been doing this a long time. What are some current trends in gear that, that you guys have noticed? Hmm. You go first. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> Trends. Uh, well, I think the whole 90s, we talked about it before, but the whole 90s thing is coming back. There's more and more of that 90s revival thing. Um, I think uh, uh, another thing as well is, so we went through this phase where people wanted one thing to do everything. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like one pedal to rule them all. Um, and now I think people are going back to... You know, less complicated, less menus. I think it's becoming, it's going, I mean, these things always come and go in waves. Uh, it's always, sure. you know, yeah. like, like all that sort of stuff. I think at the moment, um, the less is more thing is sort of more trendy. Whereas maybe a couple of years back, the more is more thing was maybe a little uh-huh. bit more trendy. The, 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 you know, and, and I think thankfully, thankfully, the mini pedals thing is starting to go away, and now it's okay. back into the big pedals. Uh huh. I, I never liked mini pedals. I never got oh. mini pedals because. Side side note: we're going to make a <laughs> we're going to make a big pedal big. We've board. been talking about it for ages. So yeah. not a mini so, board, but the opposite, like, like a all the big electro yeah, harmonics pedals. Box, all yeah, big box awesome. pedals. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We'll just get a full sheet of plywood, like yeah, a door. <laughs> a door yeah. Yeah. Get a door from from a hardware shop and oh, put pedals on it. Um, I love that. I love that. Here's, here's the thing: okay. if you if we'll you know, you can come up and do, do it. If you want to play a gig with mini, if you're playing mini pedals at home, that's one thing. If you want to play a gig, and you actually want to tread on one pedal at a time, not three pedals at a time. Yeah, you got you got to spread them out anyway. Yeah, I, I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't get it. It's the same with the whole top mounted thing. Yeah. You know, even oh, yeah. even yeah, like even like a that. boss MXR size pedal, if you're top mounted because you want to have them so crammed together, yeah. in a live scenario you press two buttons. To me it, it yeah. I think having a jacks on the side ma- means you need to space them out a little bit more. Yeah. So you actually don't press two buttons at once unless you want to press two buttons at once. But yeah, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm glad the whole mini pedals thing I think that's finally gone. Okay. Okay, I, I, I never liked them. Mm. Yeah, I, I see this kind of slight trend with um, really wanting fully produced guitar sounds. Yeah, especially like a lot of younger players, like um, all the time. So mm-hmm. I can see this sort of being a link over. There's something coming out that we can't talk about. Oh, yeah, <clears> yes, yes, stuff. Sure. But this kind of <laughs> this whole well, I can see like guitar amp sims like. Um, DAW plugins, amp sims, all that kind of stuff. I can see, see this kind of blending of worlds between recording guitar and live guitar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of started. Yeah, I think it started. I don't know how far it's going to go, but yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that being a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year or two. Um, yeah, and I think plugins. To, I mean, generally, pl- not just talking about you know integrating you know plugins and stuff into a live scenario that may or may not possibly be happening in the future but yeah. um 
plugins as a, as a whole, plugins are becoming more and more. You know, like Alex was saying, the, the fully produced sound, um, where you don't have to have an amp, you don't have to have a microphone, you don't have to have a, a studio. You just do it into a laptop at home with your headphones on, and yeah. you get a killer produced sound like, straight away. It's kind of like people have been trying to do it with amp sims for ages since the first pod and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I think there's. Um, I think this whole new dawn of quality just about to jump up like yeah. the next level. Yeah, especially well, with the, the whole AI um, stuff, you know, where it's artificial yeah. learning and and you know it is it is a little bit Terminator and you know Blade Runner kind of yeah. thing happening, but um, the rack effects. <laughs> but uh, um, you know, all that stuff Jedi it just everything. gets it's it's getting so good, you know, it's mm. getting really 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 good. Yeah, and like. Amp sims have been around forever, of course. That's, you know, that's kind of retro digital now. With the, yeah, it's yeah. been around for a long time. But this, especially that kind of crossover between DAW plugins and the live thing. Yeah, okay. okay. Which may or may not be happening in the future. Yes. <laughs> inside inside the trading knowledge. Yeah. Wow. wow. Do, do you record stuff at home with um, plugins? Not plugins, no. Okay. No. So I got to admit, I, d- I don't watch those videos. Oh, I, Matt! I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> well, it's, it's just a tool for a job, but it depends whether it's a tool right for you or not. That's the, yeah, yeah. Obviously, like you're running a studio. Um, well, I don't really use them that much because I've got some nice amps heads. Ah, uh, okay. Stuff. I'm so that's why all the plugin videos are usually always from my place, and I'm the I'm oh, the okay, guy who yeah. does all the plugin stuff. And I mean, I've got some mm. great heads, nice you know, here too. as well, and I can use them as well, but. Um, Often the I think the plugins are just just as easy to use, and yeah. they're getting so so good now that yeah yeah there's almost no need. The only the only downside with the plugin side is that you when you when you record something with an amplifier you kind of you, you you record it the way you want it to sound and you have to make it work. The mm-hmm. plugin thing can open this whole Pandora, Pandora's box uh, or rabbit hole or whatever you want to call it where you never stop tweaking the sounds. You know, you spend all your time tweaking yeah. the sounds okay, as yeah. opposed to committing. committing to a sound. Yeah, yeah. that's the word, yeah. committing. Thank you. And th- th- I think there's a room for both of them in the recording walls. Yeah. Um, for me, like, amp sims aren't quite there. But, however, if you want to, all of a sudden you need a mess of boogie big thing for some big chunky power chords in a chorus mm-hmm. that's just going to sit back in the mix. Great, perfect. Yeah. yeah, okay. Or a little tweed combo to do some a slide part, yeah. that kind of sound, and you don't have a little tweed combo yeah. you're just kicking around. Um, all those extra little f- flavors that you don't have with your you know, amps in the real world. Yeah. yeah, okay. I think that's the tool that really gets practically used. Yeah, or yeah. For, for me anyway. Yeah. Here's a, here's a question, and I ask this as I like, see seven hundred pedals behind Gabor's head. <laughs> Have we reached? And I've asked other pedal guys this: Have we reached yep. pedal saturation? I think we've reached it a few years ago, but uh, okay. it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Now, the, the, the interesting, and, and I mean, that's the thing I always find amazing with this sort of stuff. Like, I mean, just just for example, just just first thing that pops into my head now, uh, like a rat pedal. When yep. did that come out? In the late seventies, early eighties, yep. late seventies, I think. The, the rat, late seventies, yeah. There's still rat pedals coming out that are based, yeah. or not rat pedals, but pedals that are based on rat pedal circuits with slight little tweaks here and there that sound great. And they're coming out now. They're brand new, you know, coming out right now. You'd think the rat circuit thing would be saturated, but someone yeah. thinks of something a little bit different and the tiny little things often make such a big difference. Like actually Australian pedal builder, one of our pedal of the year award winners made this rat circuit, but it's two channels. So you have two rats and it has a full three band EQ on it. And just changing the normal filter thing on a rat to a three band EQ yeah, and then yeah. having two channels to it. It's such a cool pedal. Like both of us uh-huh. love that pedal. Yeah, um, it's like, the ultimate Ulti- one of the ultimate distortion panels, and I mean, you think <laughs> you know, Kill six it. months ago before he sent it to us, you would have gone, yeah. oh, I mean, rat pedals that would have reached a saturation level. But mm-hmm. I've personally never. I mean, maybe there are other pe- other people people out there who've made 
rat circuits with a three band EQ on it um, and put a second channel on it, but I don't know of them. Um, so there's this, you know, this guy from Wollongong who goes, you know what, I'm just going to do that. And it's great. <laughs> yeah. So I think it, I think it's one of those, you think it could be saturated, but I think there's always someone. It's, it's like, you know, in sports, you have all these world records, like how fast can someone run 100 meters? You'd think you'd eventually have to get to a point where they can't run 100 meters any faster, but then someone will come along and mm-hmm. run faster. You know, it's, I think it's the same with pedals. It's just, it, it's a never ending. Mm-hmm. And while there's an audience, while there's people that want, yeah. that will buy it, it's, it will never end. It's probably like, I have a theory about, about popular music. Surviving through the decades. Oh, do tell us, Alex. Probably similar to that, <laughs> as that every decade there's heaps of music made, right? And all the good stuff gets remembered, and all the average stuff gets pushed aside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when your dad says, "Oh, the music in the fifties was the best," of, well, he remembers all the good songs. He doesn't remember yeah. all the crap on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. yeah. Same with the sixties, seventies. No, yeah. Whatever. So. Um, I can see it being similar kind of thing where all the good stuff just survives, yeah, and all the average stuff kind of goes. Oh, actually, that just ends up in a box somewhere. Yeah, mm. that ends up on so Facebook just... Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Marketplace. Marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> I like so, that theory. That's a good theory. Yeah. Right. It's a theory like anything else that can be disproven, but sure. that's um. Yeah, there's like heaps of crap in the 60s, but there's also some really, really amazing stuff in the 60s. Yeah. It's like YouTube channels, you know? People remember the good ones, and channels like ours will be forgotten. (laughs) Good theory. I like it. I like it. And what's um, what's 2023 look like for you guys for the super fun, awesome, happy time Pell show? Uh, Well, I haven't told Alex yet, but he's fired. Uh... Whoops! Did I, did I say that out loud? So much, you so are much so mean to here. Alex. You are so mean to Alex. I've got to keep See? going with the mean to Alex. Um, Do you though? Alex is the. Ma- I got to say, Alex is the master of the very quiet. Just sneaks, sneaks a burn in here and there. I like that. Yeah, I'm the I'm the I'm the loud guy. I'm the in loud. You know everything loud from the playing to the talking. And Alex is sort of the yeah. Let's not talk too much. And it's just yeah. every once in a while, just throw. <laughs> A one-liner in there. Yeah, um, yeah. it's gold. Uh, 2023, uh, well, at the moment, we're sort of on holidays. So um, um, yeah. I think it, I've got my kids home at the moment, and while they're home, I'm trying to spend as much time as I can with them and do stuff with them. Yeah, so nice. uh, I think we're going to start come February, we're going to start, or a couple, couple of weeks anyway, we're going to start getting back into, into filming again yeah. and – there's a whole bunch of stuff piling up next to me in our to-do list that people have sent to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just more more of the same, but uh, there are a few things I would like to, you know, a few extra things to throw in there, a few different things to throw in there to do. Um, you always got to change things up a little bit. Um, uh, you know, maybe 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 try out a few new things here and there. Um, which, you know, people may or may not like. We try, you know, we often try things. We try to do the whole, so many people do the do the questions and comments thing, you know, the... Oh, that's right. We tried to do that <laughs> yeah. for a little while and no one cared. No one watched it. No one yeah, yeah. cared. So we just sort of stopped doing it. So it's just all trial and error. The main thing yeah. is that the, 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 the production machine of making these video demos just keeps going. Um, yeah. The guitars change, the amps change, the pedals change, but we sort of try to keep that sort of going. And then we just try out a few new things here and there. So there's a couple of ideas that I haven't even talked to Alex about yet that I'm going to, you know, that for um, for maybe some stuff to do this year or to look at sure. this year. There may be a couple of pedal board builds, include one being that large pedal board build. Another one, actually a, yep. a viewer comment that, um, was an interesting comment, and I said challenge accepted. So we got to do that now. Um, what, what was that? What was the challenge? So he was saying uh, it was doing a. I don't know where the number came from, but he said make a seven hundred dollar pedal board um, without an amp, direct in for seven hundred dollars okay. uh, for ambient sort of uh, what is it? Dream pop kind of music. Okay. I think that's what he called a dream pop. Um, no, and no. I don't know where the number $700 came from, but he said $700. And I said, okay, challenge accepted. Because we just got sent K-Line, which is a, one of the cheaper Chinese sort of brands, sent as a pedal board, which I can imagine would be very cheap. 
Okay. Um, and we just also got uh, quite a cheap, which is really good, actually. The um, uh, uh, what is it called again? The Oh, Veilton. That's right. For people with special glasses oh, and yeah. warming it up again. Yeah. Which is a little yeah. sort of um, um, amp sim multi effects unit, which is very cheap as well. And then, so, yeah, I want to put together a low budget um, ambient dream pop, lots of reverb, lots of delays, but direct in stereo pedal board for uh, under $700. So that's that's one coming. That's a, that's a project in the making. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and a few other things. I mean, I'm always keen. Directing is always something I'm interested in, so there'll be more of that sort of stuff. And But I think that people like seeing more stuff about more, maybe more personal things about us as well. So I, mean, I think mm-hmm. there could be a few more of these things coming this year as well. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, – but other than that, same crap, different day, really. That's what that's <laughs> what we've been doing for eight years. and That's selling it, right? So- <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like to acquire another nice guitar off my dream list. Oh, yes? Uh, yeah. Well, I got one um, this year, just gone. Was that the Gretsch? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice. What, so el- that, what else is on the dream so list? Nice. Um, I think I need something with nice with humbuckers. Okay. So I'm thinking either... And an aluminium neck. What? <laughs> no? Uh, so you're boring. Um Maybe an SG or a Les Paul, uh-huh. or somewhere in the middle, like a uh, Les G. Late night. Do you remember the late nineties? Um, Les Paul double cuts, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DC. Yeah, I love those. And um, so something like that, or a PRS. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Very nice. Hmm. Very nice. With humbuckers. Yeah, like very open, jangly. Vintage humbuckers, that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. Well, look out for some of that on the show as yeah. well. So, um, anyway, can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I make some more videos? It's a lot yeah, of right. videos. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I, I, I just bought a guitar that I really like that was sort of on a, on a wish list for a little while, which is that, mm. that modern jazz master. Um, yeah, Alex right. always makes fun of me that, oh, another jazz master, but. Um, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it is cool guitar, but it is a jazz master like all the other jazz. And just for that, I'm only going to be buying jazz master shaped guitars from now on. <laughs> just, just to spite you, Alex. <laughs> jazz master racism—that's what it's come down to. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. Know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to. We're gonna. I think we're going to start working with pure Salem guitars shortly. So I think he's sending okay. us some stuff, and I, I really this is like. I really like oh, yeah. the shape of his guitars. So you know about them? Yeah. Yeah, I've I heard them on another guitar podcast years ago, the guy who runs it. I saw Brett Kingman demo something. And he I got saw one you recently, guys yeah. posting pictures. Yeah. So I was going to ask, are they getting distributed out here somehow? Well, Rick from Pure Salem Guitars, um, I think he's – is he – He's in. He's not in Salem because I thought it would. He would be. You know the whole witch thing. But I don't think yeah. he's there. I think he's in Florida or something like that. Or okay. He's think Florida. he's an ex cop who was close to retirement and just said he couldn't do it anymore and just stopped. And he said if he would have done it for another six months, he would have gotten a really good pension. But he just said, Nah, not doing this anymore. Wow. And wow. Uh, started building guitars. And then I think he, what he does now is he it's it's done in Korea. So yeah. he doesn't build him himself because he wants to keep the cost down. But I love it, the shapes. I love – it's all really odd shapes and really quirky yeah, stuff cool. that he does. They and cool. And he contacted us out of the blue and he said, would you guys be keen to to do some videos for me? And because he, he – I think he's redoing – there's maybe four or five new guitars that are coming out. Two of them are okay. the ones that Brett Kingman got, the yeah. El Brujo and the La Bruja or something like that, The fe- the male and the female shape. One is like a – reverse firebird and the other one is a non-reverse firebird kind of thing yeah, but a little I, bit different I, I saw one i'm not sure which one no, i saw it but it looked awesome they're great looking guitars and i think he's revamping a lot of the uh slightly different headstock designs different pickups and all that sort of stuff so he's having a bigger revamp this year tw- okay. 2023 and he contacted us and he said he picked a handful of youtube channels that he likes he's a big dod fan and he got okay. into our okay. channel through my dod videos <laughs> 
And he said, um, I really like what you do with the D&D videos and I really like the way you do videos and do, do, you, want, do you mind if I send you some guitars? And I said, no, no, so please good. do. So I, I'm, I'm waiting for them to come because I really I, – I love the way they look. They're such cool, yeah. unique shapes. Uh, and he seems like a really nice dude. I had a few chats with him online and he seems, he seems like a really nice guy. Uh, which that's is cool. to, that's a big important thing too, you know. There are some companies yeah. we stop working with because the people are not yeah. very nice. I mean, there's <laughs> really? one I think I know. I th- one in particular. I think I know which one you're thinking about. Which we, oh, we, yeah. we won't name any names, you know. Tell we'll me we'll later tell you after we stop yeah, recording. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. there's some people that go a bit. Because that wasn't he, he's yeah. a cuckoo dude. Yeah, yeah but there's a, there's a couple of not yeah. super nice people. Um, hmm. So dealing but that's a couple in the world. In a whole world, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. so that's out of the eight years or whatever we've yeah. been doing it for, there's maybe two or three people that we've dealt with where you go, Okay, no, thank you. But um he seems like a really nice guy, this Rick guy. And um mm. uh yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Whenever they arrive, I don't know, he, he hasn't said specifically when he's sending it, but he, he contacted me, I don't know, a month ago or so, a month and a half ago, l- late last yeah, year cool. and sort of said, um, do you mind if we? I don't know. I don't know which ones he's sending us, or yeah. So I don't know. But yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to. All right, Alex Angabor, thank you so much for joining me. It was so fun to talk about the super fun, awesome, happy time pedal show. I'll put all the links in the the show notes. But if people just Google, um, I don't know, like super fun pedal, um, they'll probably find you or DOD. DOD. Yeah, look for DOD pedals on YouTube, and you find me. <laughs> No. Yeah, su- super fun awesome is the best way. There's also super fun awesome hot, a hot sauce. sauce I yeah, think. If, uh, okay. on Instagram, not, I think not that it's we're not, not, not okay. we're, we're not hot sauce. We, we, yeah, we don't make. <laughs> we sh- maybe we should branch out into oh. hot sauces. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, <all good. laughs> awesome. But thank you, fellas. Really good to find out the uh, behind the scenes of how a, a, a successful YouTube channel works, and specifically what what you guys are doing. Love it. Thank, oh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, well, I don't know how successful oh, yeah. we are, but we, we try. We try. Thanks for the hang. Yeah, thanks, Matt. All right, there you go. Alex and Gabor. I like those guys. We had a cool hang, and it was great to hear more about the show. After we recorded this interview, they said, hey, do you want to talk and we'll put you on our podcast? So they proceeded to interview me. I'll put some, some links in the show notes for that if you want to check that out. I think I prefer asking the questions than answering. But if you want to hear a bit of a bit of my story, it's there. It's there. And again, any excuse to hang out with those guys was totally worth it. My thanks to Joe, Todd, and the whole team at Fretboard Biology. Those guys have been sponsoring this show for a couple of years. I met Joe a couple of years before that, so it's nice how that relationship has developed and I totally believe in in the course that Joe has put together so please check that out all right it's time for me to get out of here thank you so much for tuning in I love it it's almost seven years of doing this podcast and I love it there's a whole bunch of guitar folks checking out the shows it's really cool so thank you so much it means the world hey before I go I just want to inspire you with some words that Michael Schenker told all of us Back in episode number 150, you know what he said. Keep rocking. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking, indeed. Okay, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye now.